Hi, welcome to the show. I'm Wendy Trubo, Quality Director and Co-Founder of Visions Healthcare, which is located in both Wellesley and Dedham, Massachusetts. Over the course of the show, we're going to be discussing your physical, biochemical, emotional, energetic, and spiritual health. Today, I have Dr. Sarah Byrne. She's a board-certified family physician who practices in the Dedham location at Visions Healthcare. Sarah, thanks for joining us. I'm thanks so for delighted you're here. <laughs> So talk to me about how you got where you are today. Mm -hmm. You went to medical school, then you went to residency, you said, I'm gonna be a family doctor, mm -hmm. and here you are at Visions. Mm -hmm. What was that process? Mm -hmm. I think throughout um, medical school and residency as well, I was kind of always looking for something, um, I guess a little bit different. Um, you know, I think medical school prepares you in some aspect for mm -hmm. a lot of the, you know, physiology and um, um, the biochemical piece, but I think I always felt like there was something a little bit lacking. Mm -hmm. um, when I was in medical school, I participated in um, an energy medicine class, which was great, um, but it was so polar opposite, it seemed to be at the time of my medical training, and um, it was kind of hard to put the two pieces together, so. Was that part of your medical school or oh, no. outside of yeah, medical Yeah, no, I found it outside of medical school. Okay. Um, so was, uh, while I was in medical school, I was also taking courses um, along those lines, but I think, you know, putting it together was difficult. So um, when I was in residency, I got an email that was forwarded about visions, and I looked on the website, and um, as soon as I walked in, I immediately knew that that's where I had to be. Were you always someone who was off the beaten path or did something different mm -hmm. than your colleagues? Mm -hmm. I guess I would say that's true. Um, I think you know I was always looking for the, the missing piece and um, maybe supporting people a little bit um, more along the emotional spiritual side uh, which I think you know really can impact someone's health um, and trying to find how to help people really feel healthier um, and it seemed like when I was uh, practicing in, in residency um, you know, there were steps that we took to manage disease, but I never really felt um, much of the time that people really were thriving and mm. feeling healthy. And so finding functional medicine and uh, at Visions, um, I think I've really found how to help people do that, which is exciting. So how is it different? So someone mm -hmm. comes to you for a family practice mm -hmm. for their primary care. Mm -hmm. You see birth to death. Mm -hmm. So. How is how you approach it mm -hmm. different than what was going on in your residency mm -hmm. program? So I think the cool thing about functional medicine is that you still maintain a lot of that um, biochemical knowledge, and there's a lot of biochemistry um, involved. And I wish I didn't get rid of my biochemistry yeah, textbook, right? but um, you know the what it um, how it's a little bit different is in looking at I guess more the approach to the patient <clears throat> so for example if someone came in um, and let's say their energy was a little low or maybe they had some joint pain um, you know I think in a traditional medical model um, you might um, you know, maybe make sure they're not anemic or, yeah, or, you know, make sure they don't have rheumatoid arthritis or something like that. And if those are normal, it kind of ends there a little bit. Yeah. So in functional medicine, it's really looking at how is this whole person functioning? You know, how how is, um, what's going on in their life? Um, what do they eat? I mean, you know, in medical <laughs> school, we spent one day talking about nutrition, which is crazy. You know, yes. I think what you put in your body is so essential to how you feel and how how your body functions so um, so I'd look at the person and say are there things that are producing inflammation that's leading to the joint pain or you know are they not eating nutrients that they need to fuel their body mm -hmm. or I mean there's so I think there's such a, um, a depth to to the approach of functional medicine so I think it's just in in the way um, that you look at uh, those problems and trying to link the problems together sometimes so it's not like different aspect you know different separate diagnoses so what do you say time. to someone who comes in and they're mm -hmm. like, I, I just want my annual <laughs> visit, yeah, and then you get into it. What mm -hmm. What's different? Mm -hmm. how, how would I notice a difference mm -hmm. if I came in to see you? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, if they're you know generally healthy people, um, may not necessarily bring up a lot of the things that are minor. Um, you know, I know for myself, going to checkups, you know, 
I'm pretty good. I eat pretty healthy. You can I get try out to of exercise. Bed. You know, I mean, I go to work. I do okay. Um, but I think it's trying to dive into, you know, one of the nice things that we're able to offer at Visions is um, longer appointments. So, you know, it's not like you're trying to squeeze in your life story in 15 minutes. Right. You know, you really have the time to ask about a person's, you know, how is your energy? Is it where you want it to be? Is it at your, you know, um, what do you do for fun? You know, um, so uh, thinking about those, how do you sleep? You know, what do you eat? And those things that seem really simple, I think um, sometimes really open up a whole other aspect of someone's health. And they say, oh yeah, you know, maybe I have been having these symptoms, but that's just sort of the way I am. And they kind of shrug it off. But those things a lot of times um, can be f helped. And then the person is like, oh wow, I never knew that I could feel better. So are you checking things that are typical or mm -hmm. atypical or both? Mm -hmm. Um, so I think there are a lot of, um, you know, we do do lab work. So a lot of the things that we're investigating, um, because we look at all aspects of the person, we're looking at maybe vitamin levels um, that maybe aren't usually checked. Um, we're looking at markers for stress, um, like the adrenals mm -hmm. um, in the lab work. So they're not totally <clears throat> out of the scope necessarily, but our baseline for looking at a new patient might mm -hmm. be more expansive than, than um, somewhere else. Um, but I think functional medicine also offers um, sort of an, a next step, and there are tests that we offer that are maybe a little bit different than typical, um, looking at maybe sensitivities to foods that's mm -hmm. not usually something that's checked, um, or you know other studies that might dig a little bit deeper. Who's a who's someone you might look at sensitivities to food to? Because mm -hmm. it seems like it's so prevalent, mm -hmm. and everybody says, "Oh, my kid, my friend, mm -hmm. my mother." Yeah. Who is that person who you'd be um, checking that out? Pretty on? much anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think our our foods have changed over time. Um, whether they're you know genetically modified and um, you know things that we put into our system, we're not always maybe aware of what those ingredients are and then what mm -hmm. effects they have on our bodies. Mm -hmm. So, um, someone who may show signs of food sensitivity. You know, anything from decreased energy level, you know, it doesn't always have to be digestive mm -hmm. problems. Um, really, really anything. Headaches? Headaches, for sure. Yep. Skin? Yep. Yep. Eczema? Yes. Acne? All yep. that stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yep. Talk to me about genetic modification. Mm. In our favor, not in our favor. Mm. What's your opinion? So, you know, um, even just thinking about gluten. <laughs> um, <laughs> our <th> favorite topic. <laughs> You know, every some people come in and, you know, I start to talk a little bit about food sensitivities and they're like, what's the deal with gluten? You know, everybody's wanting gluten free. Like, is that a thing? You know, what, what's the big deal? Um, and, you know, the problem is that um, over the last maybe 50 years, um, wheat has been modified so that companies can grow it faster and grow more of it. Um, and nobody thought to test and see would that affect a person's health um, down the line if that you know is the case. Mm -hmm. So um, the the wheat actually contains more of, of the gluten uh, in it, and then that actually we're finding has uh, an impact on the person's not only digestive but health otherwise. So um, in a lot of cases it can be detrimental, um, and like I said, not always in an obvious way. So not in our fat. In yeah, our not in our favor. favor. Yeah. Hmm. Have you read Wheat Belly? <laughs> I've read Wheat Belly. Yes. How horrifying is that? I know. Wheat Belly is kind of what got me, um, you know, sort of the first step in thinking, actually for my for myself too. And um, one of the nice things about practicing at Visions is kind of taking a look at my own health. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's amazing when you start to read about what's going on with our food. Um, yes. And... Um, yeah, so I think for myself, starting to read that and move, you know, away from gluten-containing foods, um, and later uh, through one of the doctors actually at, at Visions uncovering that I ended up having celiac disease. So Lovely. that was something that I was, um, Visions actually helped uh, my own health and um, me find a diagnosis for something that, you know, wasn't necessarily screaming out um, symptom-wise for myself. Do you treat yourself or do you let someone else treat you? Oh, no, you? yeah. No, it's a good <laughs> idea to have your own doctor, so. It's hard to treat yourself. It is hard to treat yourself, yeah. So I saw um, Dr. Emsbo is one of the other physicians at the practice, um, so. So how's your life been different since you mm. eliminated gluten? Because oh. here's the thing. I don't yeah. think that the world is necessarily organized around mm -hmm. 
healthy eating, gluten-free, mm -hmm. mindful eating. So mm -hmm. now you have become someone with celiac disease mm -hmm. who is one of what? A couple million people in the world, in mm -hmm. the United States who have it. Mm -hmm. So now you're a little bit on the fringe. Mm -hmm. What's it like? You know, I feel lucky that I was diagnosed now and that there is more awareness, I think, um, moving toward foods without, you know, there are lots of gluten-free menus, even in basic restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's really helped me reflect on what I'm putting in my system for me and my family. So I have a son who's almost a year old mm -hmm. and thinking about, okay, how can I set him up to be healthier? And what, you know, what am I putting in his body? Um, and then what effect will that have down the line? But, you know, symptom wise, I think, like I said, um, I was kind of living with some symptoms that I didn't necessarily think about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe a little bit of abdominal bloating or, you know, constipation, which I think a lot of people may have, but they sort of shrug off. Right. Um, it's not something that doctors necessarily, your primary care might not say, like, how often do you poop? You know, it's not and a typical... And what's the quality of it? That's right, and describe it. Um, <laughs> so, um, so I think those have dramatically, dramatically improved for me. And so for me, it was... Oh, this is what a normal per you know a normal person feels like. This right. is what it feels like to not have those symptoms. But I wouldn't have known, I think, otherwise. How has it changed your relationship with your patients? Mm. Is it different mm. because now, I'm assuming you didn't have any food restrictions mm. prior to mm -hmm. the diagnosis of celiac mm -hmm. disease and the elimination of gluten, mm -hmm. but now you do. Mm -hmm. So how do you? Has it changed how you are with your patients? Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's, you know, it's nice to have the experience because we do work with a lot of patients who, who do have food sensitivities. You know, even if it's um, eliminating a food for, to try to feel better, experimenting with it, um, I think it's really challenging. <clears throat> you know, out there you're trying to hang out with friends and go out to eat and, you know, you have to be the one who's like, is there gluten in that or what is it? Um, so I think it can be really hard, especially socially for people. So I think... Um, you know, being able to empathize with them and say, okay, you know, I've, I've had that experience or um, here's, here's some ideas that I've come up with for breakfast or um, I think that can really help. Mm -hmm. What inspires you about the kind of medicine you're practicing? Hmm. Um, one of my favorite things, I think, is when patients come and um, maybe they've seen specialists or maybe they've seen, you know, different doctors over the years and, um, and, they, and they still just don't feel good. You know, um, there's nothing, um, maybe their disease is managed, but they're still looking for how do I feel better? You know, I'm still tired or I just don't feel like myself. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the exciting thing about functional medicine is sometimes uncovering those um, things that may be less obvious, you know, whether it's a food sensitivity or, or other things that we explore and having those patients say, you know, wow, you know, I'm, I'm so excited or they'll be so excited to, you know, to work with me. And, um, and then when they come back and they say, I feel a thousand times better than when I came in. Um, those are, I think those are the moments mm -hmm. that really are, um, are exciting for me. <laughs> and I think what really inspires me to um, do what I do. Can you share about a patient you've had mm. in the last few months who's mm. had that sort of transformation mm. for themselves? Anyone mm -hmm. who comes to mind? Yeah. Um, I mean, there are a few. I think um, I can think of at least a couple just off the top of my head. There's um, one gentleman who um, his family um, members have celiac, but for himself, he didn't necessarily ha you know, have a diagnosis. Um, but we did uncover some food sensitivities and uh, look at his digestive health, um, where perhaps his, um, you know, the good bacteria that live in our uh, intestine weren't um, thriving, um, may maybe were off balance a little bit. Um, so in working with maybe eliminating some foods and supporting him with probiotics and you know, talking about um, things along those lines, um, he came back and was like, I feel great. I was like, yes, you know, I want these people to write down, you know, write it down. So right. just for, I think other patients, you know, to help them make those changes. I think when people really can <clears throat> commit to doing it, just to even see how they feel, um, sometimes it can make a huge difference. So he didn't have celiac, mm -hmm. but he changed something in his diet. Mm -hmm. He added some probiotics. Yep. Any other major yeah, so taking out a lot of sugar. So, um, you know, I think um, gluten and... Um, 
is one factor for some people, but I think for other people, um, diets tend to be a little bit heavier in the carbohydrates and sugars, especially processed foods. So, you know, one thing I think for anybody that we try to work with is moving away from stuff in packages, you know, and um, eating things that you recognize um, and seeing what, you know, it's, it's an actual food um, and that can make a huge difference. So, you know, for him, maybe taking out some of those carbohydrates that are more processed and taking out some of the sugary foods. Um, so this helped him. A huge difference for him. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Tell me about someone else. Hmm. Um, there was another um, young woman who, you know, kind of a young, healthy person. And again, I think, um, you know, we see people from all along the spectrum. So some people come and they're generally healthy people and they make these changes and it's like, wow, they're, you know, they go and tell all of their friends, you know, because I feel great. Um, you know, and then we see people who have more complex um, uh, medical history, but I think even, um, you know, patient with diabetes, for example. Mm -hmm. So even in diabetes, you know, um, obviously diet's a huge piece, but I think a lot of times um, it's more about, okay, you can have X amount of carbohydrate about this size, you know, um, or counting the carbohydrates versus looking at the quality of food. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's one um, woman who I saw with diabetes who, you know, really shifted towards trying to um, look at the quality of her foods. Um, and that really improved her, her diabetes. Have you gone up to the corporate offices recently at Visions? Recently? We have, have hamburgers. <laughs> Have you seen the hamburgers? Yes, I have seen those. So these are the, um, like for McDonald's and yeah, it's very scary. If, if you haven't had this experience um, and seeing what happens if you take a McDonald's or um, Burger King hamburger and leave it there for- I mean, don't eat it. Don't eat it, <laughs> leave it in the package and then maybe a year later, go back and look at it. Um, it's basically petrified. It's not, it doesn't mold because it's probably all chemicals. It's very frightening. <laughs> so I would personally argue if it doesn't mold, rot, or decompose, it's probably not food. That's right. <laughs> so these are very interesting. <laughs> so how do you, what do you do with your family mm. around food? Because mm -hmm. you're, you're now, you mentioned you have a son. Mm -hmm. He's almost a year. So mm -hmm. you're a working mom. Mm -hmm. Your husband or your partner, I'm assuming, works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what is your approach to food when you're mm -hmm. getting into, you know, you need to go to work and you have celiac. So here's all these mm -hmm. layers mm -hmm. that you have a child, you have an, mm -hmm. a, an allergy to food. Mm -hmm. How do you do this? Mm. How do you balance this type of, all these issues? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think for a family, it, it does take effort to make that shift. So if you're used to, you know, grabbing something that's easy, you just have to think of, okay, I need to think of another way to um, actually make re real food and, you know, spend that time. So it, it does, I think in the beginning, there's a little bit of a learning curve and figuring out how am I going to do this and keep my family healthy. I think um, also like for my husband, you know, he started to look at, oh, hey, hmm, maybe, you know, let me think about that. And I'm still trying to get him to come in for, an, for a consult, not with me, but you can't one of the other family, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, and even my mom. So I had, you know, um, she, she had a celiac test. She doesn't have it, but she does carry some of the genes. So probably that's came down um, from her side. But um, so she's really shifted in um, thinking about what she's eating. So it's really kind of rippled out, I think, for Talk the family about that the genetic component of celiac disease mm -hmm. can you say more about that and the mm -hmm. how it works and mm -hmm. how come not everybody who has the gene has celiac mm -hmm. and talk to me about the yeah the spectrum mm -hmm. um, so most um, people who are have a celiac diagnosis carry one of two different genes um, so you know with functional medicine um, this kind of goes back to how we'd maybe look at something. So um, a person may have certain genetics that they're born with, whether it's you know a predisposition towards celiac or maybe a predisposition towards diabetes mm -hmm. or something else. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean you'll you'll get that disease. Um, there's your whole life of stuff um, that happens um, leading up. So you know, maybe one person who has the, carries those genes for celiac um, is a kid who always gets ear infections and they're on chronic antibiotics, or maybe they have a stressful, you know, um, life, uh, family, family life. life. Um, 
and you know with stress we produce cortisol or maybe they're exposed to something in the environment or whatever all of those little things that um, affect our biochemistry or affect our emotional spiritual health all that stuff um, is part of who we are. So mm -hmm. I don't know why for me, it, I had that little trigger that put me over the edge and had Perhaps to say, residency maybe, in medical the school <laughs> maybe there is stress in medical deprivation. school, um, but maybe, you know, um, versus somebody else. So really that's what functional medicine looks at is an individualized approach um, for each person to say, okay, well you have these factors, let's investigate that and at mm -hmm. least know what are you at risk for? You know, if you have a sensitivity and you carry those genes, well you might be a little bit more careful about avoiding gluten, you know, maybe more for your life versus if you don't carry the genes and maybe you're, you're um, eliminating gluten to feel better. Um, so I think it makes a little bit of a difference. Hmm. Interesting. Talk to me, can you talk to me more about the genetic component, mm -hmm. what that means? I'm not actually sure how many people carry the genetic component. I think it's pretty high, though. I think it's, yeah, yeah. So I think that's why having having these um, genes uh, in your makeup doesn't necessarily mean you'll have the diagnosis. Um, but I think that it can perhaps set you up where, um, again, you'd be a little bit more careful about um, taking in gluten. Yeah. Do you have any idea if any other genetic mutations play together with mm. the genetic risks like the methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase, mm. huge mouthful? <laughs> <laughs> any idea if those play together? Mm -hmm. That's just not something if, that I know. Hmm. But do they act synergistic? I know that if mm. you carry two genes for celiac mm -hmm. disease, they can be synergistic, mm -hmm. meaning one increases your risk two times, mm -hmm. one increases your risk eight times, mm -hmm. and it's not, it's something they act together to mm -hmm. make it even more likely that you'll have celiac. Mm -hmm. What about other genetic mutations? Do those mm -hmm. play into the factor two, or the mix? Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea? I mean, I, I don't know kind of quantitatively, but um, so the MTHFR um, is another really interesting um, genetic mutation that's kind of becoming a little bit more in the forefront, especially in functional medicine. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically an enzyme that's involved in a number of things in your body, um, including your B12 and folate cycles. So um, it can affect anything from your ability to detoxify. Um, it can affect how your body processes estrogen. Um, it can affect um, mental health. Um, and yep, so mood, because um, it can affect your serotonin. It can affect how your cells produce energy. Um, so again, it's kind of looking, wow, there are all these areas um, that potentially could be affected by this one genetic predisposition. And it's fixable or preventable or mm -hmm. alterable? Yeah, so, um, you know, having, having a genetic component um, gives you information about how can I, knowing I have this piece, so for example, say you're someone who um, has a history of, um, say, menstrual problems, whether it's endometriosis or fibroids or something along those lines, um, you know, a functional medicine way of looking at it might be to maybe test for this MTHFR gene and say, okay, well, we know you have a copy of this, so perhaps, um, perhaps you're not able to break down your estrogen normally. So then what happens is the um, extra estrogen um, circulating in the system isn't, isn't broken down and you can't eliminate it as well. Um, so looking at that, you want to support that person by helping with that, what's called methylation, um, and helping them take that step from uh, toxic estrogen to an estrogen that you can actually get rid of, mm -hmm. um, poop out of your system, basically. And here's where um, the constipation comes that's in. That's right, and if you're constipated, then that, that, that doesn't help. Um, so you know, having that to look at um, <clears throat> is really adds another dimension to um, a person, their symptoms, and how their body is functioning. I mean, it sounds like there's so much that we can impact, mm -hmm. but we have to look for it. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so it takes longer. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hence the longer visit, right? That's right. You know, I think with, um, with functional medicine, we're, because we're looking at the whole person, you know, it's, um, it does take time. I mean, um, people will often say, oh, well, I have this, but it's not really a big deal, or this is kind of minor. I mean, I always tell people, like, I want to hear everything. You know, I want to hear all those little things that you think aren't a big deal because they're all kind of clues. So, mm -hmm. you know, in working with patients, we're trying to put those clues together. Um, and sometimes those little clues can then point in a direction um, um, that eventually helps someone feel better. So it's like being a sleuth. It is. Do yes. you read mysteries Problem when you're not solving. working? <laughs> it really is. It's yeah. like finding what is going on with people. Yeah. Do you take new patients? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And 
you take everything from a consult to mm -hmm. a primary care visit. Mm -hmm. And you take a baby and you take someone who's really old. Yes. Is there anyone you don't see? You, you see everybody. So. <laughs> and is there any particular type of patient who is your favorite? Like, I love mm. this. Mm. Um, and it's okay to say no. Yeah. I just wasn't sure. You know, like, I think with a lot of family medicine doctors, I, I love diversity. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think I love working with a variety of people. So it's fun to see maybe a child who has allergies and, um, or, and then you have a, a patient who has fibromyalgia, you know, or some, you know, so I think it's fun for me to, to see all different types of patients. Is there anything I didn't ask you that you would want to share mm. with our audience? Mm. I think the one thing is um, just kind of reaching out um, in my experience at working at Visions, I think there are a lot of patients who can benefit from um, from the type of care that we offer and from functional medicine's approach to health. So, you know, if there are people out there who um, haven't maybe who don't feel at their best or don't quite feel healthy or haven't quite found the answer that they're looking for, um, you know, come give us a try because I think there's a lot out there and the depth that we offer, um, sometimes we can uncover something that, you know, may just um, not have been looked at in a certain way. So basically what I just heard you say is don't take fatigue, mm -hmm. acne, don't irritable bowel, <laughs> don't settle for those things yeah. because they are abnormal. Mm -hmm. Yes. And don't lose hope that those can be altered. Right. Yeah. Let us, you know, thank take you. a take a different perspective. Thank you. Yeah, thank I'm you. I'm so happy you were able to Thanks join me today. Me. <laughs> really, like, really gra like grateful <laughs> that you came in. Thanks, Wendy. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today in our debut session for the show that really looks at how to have you be in the best health of your life. My guest today was Dr. Sarah Byrne. She is a practicing family doctor at Visions Healthcare located in Wellesley and Dedham, Mass. Sarah practices out of our Dedham location. Thank you.